Hey, good morning to you. Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. It's a really a big day today as we build up. What we do want to talk about, though, is how the Springboks have opted to gamble with a 7-1 split on the bench, while their opponents, New Zealand, have opted for the conventional 5-3 split for Saturday's Rugby World Cup final out in Paris. Now, to talk to us about this, we've roped in a former Springbok fullback and SABC sport rugby analyst, Conrad Yanjis. Conrad, did I say it right? Janjis. 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 Okay, well, Janjis. That's probably the best I've heard. Don't oh, worry. thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us this morning, Conrad. And as we start our conversation, I want us to start with this 7 1 split that we have going on for the South African team. What do you make of that? And if you're going to have um, one reserve backline player for you, would that be Ava Lilleroo? Okay, so <clears throat> first up, I think. Um, if we go back to our last game against the Matricula, it was yes. a 7-1. Mm. But that was very much experimental. Yes. You know? Um, and uh, if something ain't broke, then don't fix it. But I think the weather conditions will play a big part as well. So now you got, um, last time I checked the weather last night, it's going to be raining, if not pre-game, definitely the first half and throughout the game, uh, a bit of showers mm. here and there. So you need some, I don't see the ball going past 12. So the outside backs, do you really need them? And me as a former outside back, we always need us, you know what I mean? We're the brains in any, in any team. But um, you've got, um, going to your second question with, with Philly, mm. being the only back, we see it only as him being the only back. Yeah. But then you've got a Quacker who's played seven. And he's been amazing. He's played wing. I mean, he's the only guy who's, who's standing up, but his nose is lying down. You know, it says a lot about it. You get stuck in there. Yes. Um, and, and if things happen, you've got uh, Fuff that will cover 10. There's a lot of guys that can interchange. Mm. So I'm not too concerned with, with, with just the one. Uh, we've got a lot of, what do you want to call them? Not universal, but um, uh, guys that can play different that positions. That can play in different yeah. roles. And as you say that, I know you've already touched on Twickenham and what happened there and how the split worked for us there. But... Also, we're coming up against a New Zealand side that has improved since oh, that chicken sure. because I think in this World Cup, we've just seen them like peaking at the right time. Yeah. And um, you never ever, when we started this World Cup and they, and they lost against France in the opening mm. game, everybody was saying, New Zealand's done. Don't ever, don't ever, <laughs> ever make that mistake. There is no weak New Zealand mm. team. And we all go through those ups and downs. We had it in, in 2018. We had less than 16 months to prepare for a World Cup, and we pulled it off. They, they also had the right games to prepare them to, yeah. to get to this point, to peak, you know? That Ireland game was probably the best game of rugby I've seen in yes. years. It had everything. Just, I always say a test match is there. They call it a test match because it tests you at every level. Mm. Spiritually, mentally, <laughs> physically, whatever you can think of it's gonna test you and that's why it's a test match and that was a classic example so this week will be similar mm -hmm. um, I can only hope for good conditions but I don't see it happening and and we do hope for those good conditions and obviously if that weather's like that it's more to their advantage than ours but let's speak to can they match us up in terms of the forwards and we look at the fact that they've decided to put Whitelock on the bench who can be a threat in certain instances when it comes to the lineouts and the like what do you make of our forwards versus theirs yeah so that's where i need a guy like lawrence here you know but we, we, we only got a few minutes lawrence mm. will just talk all day about the forwards <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously yeah 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 no 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 um that that's that's also an experience thing um you you need somebody to counter our bomb squad yes so by moving is it sam onto yes. the bench and if you look at the impact he made against wales is a ah, oh, sorry not wales, not wales against um island island um you need that to counter our box our bomb squad when they arrive so you, you start with somebody also that Brody, right? Brody starts. Mm. So Brody's also, there was an injury cloud around him. So whenever a guy comes back from injury, you'd rather start him because if you put him on the bench and something goes wrong in the first five minutes, mm. you're not quite sure if he's got 75 minutes in him. Yeah. So you'd rather start him, see how long he goes, and then it's just a precautionary thing. I wouldn't look too far into it. 
I, I do want to touch on the likes of Okwaha. I know you've touched on him slightly and the type of impact that he can bring into a game. You look at Okwaha, you look at an ox. Um, I mean, they've been able to make the difference when it mattered the most, particularly ox in our last encounter in, in the semifinals. How do you see them impacting this game tomorrow? They, they've, got a, they've got a massive role to play. you got, you got ox. You know, I was sitting there and as a backline player, uh, I mentioned it in studio last week, that as South Africans, we're used to bullying people. That's, that's the game we play. We bully, we... we, 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 we I've heard Rusty say this as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. that's us. That's in our DNA as a Springbok player, a Springbok team. So, so we suffocate and strangle. And um, I know there's a lot of viewers that do not understand that, but it's just the rugby term that mm. we use. And then... Um, you, you get a guy, so now I'm on the field and, and I'm watching a game and I go, I know, I'm literally seeing, looking for positives. Um, and I go, our lineups is not functioning today. Mm. Oh, okay, we, we let it go. Our malls, because we can't get our lineouts malls, we're dropping balls, um, our collisions, we're not mm. dominating the hits, all of those things. Now I'm looking for something to get us there. So last week in particular, we're 15-6 down. Mm. If I'm on that field, I'm thinking I need something to get us down, uh, to get us downfield, so yeah. we can gamble, because now we have to score. That's that's it. The bomb squad comes on, ox first scrum, bang, and all of a sudden my my eyes light up and I go, okay, wait, things is cha things are changing, yeah. We we got more than ten minutes. That's more than enough time to mm. play with. Um, from that we get a penalty. Hundred kicks it. Yeah. Thirty meters. Beautiful. Um, now we field position, we get another penalty, we kick it five meters from the try line. Brunners comes around the corner. Uh, we got um, Duflock, well, Arcus Neyman coming along. He scores, now we're back in the mix. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like a whole process that you're thinking about. And that is their, their job. Whenever you are on the bench, it's the most difficult and it's harder than when you start because mm. you've got to you got to try to find the pace of the game. Yeah. So when you go and warm up behind the post, it's not just to ah, kick mm. your legs around and have a bit of a stretch. You, you, you're trying to pick up a vibe. Because to me, rugby yeah. is like this big dance floor. You know what I mean? You've got to just be and able to find... when you get in there, you've got to move you gotta with the rhythm. You've got to find the rhythm. Yeah. Exactly. And as I wrap with you, Conrad, let's just talk to how the last two encounters, quarters, semis, a lot of people saying we did two smash oh. and grabs in a row. <laughs> Um, how do you see it playing out tomorrow? Do you think it's going to be a dominant buck performance or do you see it going down to the wire? Smash and grab. First of all, that wasn't a smash and grab. That was a full on CIT. That's Lawrence's words. That was a grab. CIT. Yeah. Bombs, everything going off over there. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I don't want it to really. Mm. I, I don't think there's ever been in a rugby World Cup, in rugby World Cup history, that a team has won by one point, a quarters and a semi. Yeah. We cannot. Mm. We cannot have it in the final as well. It'll be awesome. Um, initially, I saw this final being nice high scoring game. When I say high scoring, 45 to yeah. 50 points in the game total. Mm. But um, where the conditions will play its part, I still think it'll be pretty free flowing. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking at about 25, 30 points in it. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, awesome. Conrad. It's been lovely having you. You can catch um, Conrad alongside Lawrence Apaka as well as former Springbok coach Peter tomorrow on SABC2. They will be bringing you the build-up to the final. That gets underway at 6.30 p.m. And, of course, uh, kickoff for that encounter will be at 9 p.m. It's all going to be live on SABC2. I mean, we at SABC love to bring you the Rugby World Cup. All right, that's how we wrap up your sport news for the week. We'll do it all over again next week.